This is how an environment can change a person. Subhanallah. Another interesting incident of a Sahabi, radiallahu anhu, who changed through this environment was that of the first Sahabi to recite the Labbaik. The first Sahabi to recite the Labbaik. And that was Hazrat Thumama with a Tha. What happened to him was prior to his Islam, he was a prominent ruler and a very well-to-do individual in Yamama. And this is in the Hijaz area. And he was so well-to-do that his goods would be exported into Makkah. Goods like oils, raisins, skins would come from him and go to Makkah. And he had a shared a close relationship with Quraysh. And due to his status and position, there was somewhat arrogance and haughtiness prior to Islam. That the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sent letters of, inv- of inviting people to Islam. Allah's beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sent these letters to the rulers of the world at the time. We learn from here the importance of sending letters to people, inviting them to Islam. The beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sent his letter to Thumama. Thumama very abruptly tore the letter of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa And he showed a lot of disregard to some sahaba. Anhu. Then some time passed and it so happened that he was passing Medina Munawwara. And Allah made it happen that some Sahaba, noticing something doubtful in him, captured him and arrested him. This was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it was Allah's will that he wasn't well guarded with many of his men. So he was arrested, escorted to Medina Munawwara, Masjid the Nabawi, sallallahu alayhi wa and tied to a pillar in the masjid. This was Allah's will. It seems from the report that the Sahaba didn't know he, 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 uh, Thumama. The Sahaba عنهم, didn't know him personally by face, but they heard of him, meaning they knew him by name. When the beloved of Allah وسلم, entered the masjid and he saw Thumama, he then explained to the Sahaba who he actually was. Then the beloved of Allah وسلم, treated Thumama very well in Masjid the Nabawi. وسلم. And we find this to be this beautiful sunnah. That whoever was brought to masjid, no matter what their background, they were given an opportunity opportunity to experience the love in Islam, in the environment of Masjid the Nabawi. Let's remember the captives of Badr, what treatment they were given just outside the precincts of the masjid. They were capped with so much of respect, they were fed with kindness by the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, and they were left for those few days, and it seemed to be more than 10 days, because the journey alone was 8 days. Then it took some time until their relatives managed to put together the, the fees to get them released. And many who couldn't afford the fee, but they were literate, were given Sahaba, yeah, Sahaba's children, and under supervision would educate them as far as reading and writing was concerned. So same like yeah, same like this case with Thumama. Imagine his ikram was made from the home of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we learn to make ikram, honor people, give ikram to people, feed people, and so many ahadith show this. Even in the Meccan stage, the beloved of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam with Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu would prepare meals and feed the senior Quraysh. Then the Nabi of Allah would give them da'wah to Islam. This quality of feeding people is a very, very important quality in our deen. And on a daily basis, the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would actually sit with Hazrat Thumama radiallahu anhu. The report is so clear that the reaction of Thumama was different in the, the three days. On the first day when the Nabi of Allah left him to take effect from the environment, he was given meals, he was given milk, he was left to experience the salah because he's right there in the proximity of the ibadat. As our elders explained, Dawat, Ta'leem, Dhikr Ibadah, and Khidmah. These are the A'mal of Hidayah. When these deeds take place in an environment, that environment becomes a means of the Hidayah of the Ummah, meaning an environment of calling to Allah, Dawat, Ta'leem, learning and teaching, learning and teaching. 
Not you know everything and, and I know everything. No, it doesn't work like that. We know something, we teach others. What others know, we learn from them. We learn from each other. This is the beauty of our deen. Our ulama explain it like this. And exchange of qualities. We shouldn't claim that we have all good qualities. No, we have more weaknesses. Concentrate on correcting our weaknesses and learn from the good in others. So learning and teaching. Ta'aleem. Dhikr, ibadah, an environment of dhikrullah, an ibadah, and khidmah, serving one another. What amazing qualities we learn from the, the lives of the sahaba, radiyallahu anhum, because they learn from the best. They learn from the beloved of Allah, janabi Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The beloved of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asks him, Mada indaka ya thumama? What do you feel? What, what do you opine? What do you say? And on the first day, he actually said this first, in taqtul, taqtul dhadam. If you kill me, you're killing a man with blood, meaning my people will come and fight out of vengeance and take revenge for me. These were his words first. These were the words that came out of his mouth. And then he also said, in tun'im, tun'im ala shakir. But if you show me kindness, I'm a man who has appreciation. I'll remember your favor. Subhanallah, what a good quality also. Alhamdulillah. But when he said, Taqtul dam, you're killing a man who has blood and my people will take revenge for me. The other meaning here is, yeah, if you kill me, I've also put to the sword many of your men as well. That's the other meaning when understanding the context. This was the first day. This was his first reaction. But on the second and the third day, his reaction was much Soft, was much, much more polite. And the sequence of his words were even more polite as well. So we find the environment of the masjid was softening him up. Every time I ponder over this hadith, I remember the incident where I went with my grandfather to Venezuela and we went in the Jamaat and there was an ishtima there and we met this one senior from uh, France and after the Jumu'ah, uh, khutbah and so forth, he then gave amazing advices on how to work on the local people of Venezuela and South America and how to be with the people. And what an amazing kar guzari and report or story he gave. It was actually a parable and an anecdote, a lesson, where he said there was this pride of lions and as they were in their pack, you know, and in their, their pride, it so happened that one lion cub got left behind. And it happened that as it was left behind, the shepherd happened to pass that same area with his flock. And as his flock was grazing, it so happened that the little lion cub started playing with his flock. And that day, when he noticed this, he was actually startled and worried and perturbed at first. But then when he realized that the cubs... The, 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 the sheep and the lion cub were playing together. He then realized there probably wouldn't be much harm and he then returned his flock to his kraal, you know, for its pr preservation with the lion cub. And this would happen on a daily basis to such an extent that after some time that lion cub actually thought itself to be a sheep or a goat. And then... The analogy goes like this, that because its environment was that of sheep, of sheep it, realized, it felt itself to be a sheep. Until one day, when a lion saw it and said to it, what's the matter with you? Don't you know that you're a lion and those are sheep? He said, no, what are you talking about? These are my brothers. We are all sheep. And it sounded the bleating of a sheep and so forth. It made like a sheep. Until it wasn't prepared to understand, until the lion then convinced it to say, what do you like to eat? He says, fresh grass. And what would you love to drink? He said, sweet water. He says, come, I, pr I promise you to arrange this for you in the best region. And it won't be far. You'll enjoy it. And then you can decide from there. And he takes him under the strategy of him going to eat fresh grass and sweet water and then he takes him into the lion's den and that's when he heard the roar of the lion 
and he understood the difference between a lion and a sheep. The point of this discussion was, in the environment alone, the ummah will realize our worth, our value, and our responsibility. So three days in that environment, Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says, Hazrat Thumama radiallahu anhu was there for those few days, the three days that he stayed in the masjid. And then we hoped that the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would ransom him, meaning would release him over some ransom and the camels that he could pay very easily would be a means of food for us because we, Ashabu Sufa, were going through so much of hunger. But the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa vision was different, subhanallah. Respected lovers of Sahaba, this is what we see. The beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa released Hazrat Thumama for Allah's sake. And he released him with ihsan, not demanding any ransom. That Thumama, you are free to go. After three days of that environment, when he leaves the Masjid the Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he felt different. He felt, you know, I want to be inside the Masjid. This is not where I want to be, outside the masjid. He goes to an area, one farm, he bathes and he returns to the masjid. He wanted to come back to the masjid, subhanallah. The feeling of being in the environment and the feeling of being out of the environment was chalk and cheese, was totally different. Something else very interesting is the fact that he went to take a bath and he returned. This was something so beautiful. Hazrat Mufti Dal Haqs Abdamad Bakatum says so beautifully that he would have learned in the environment of the masjid or the talim of the masjid about the, the beauty of taking a bath, the practice, the sunnah practice or the mustahab practice of taking a bath before embracing Islam. This is not a condition like many of us understand. When a person wants to embrace Islam, we make it conditional. No, you must bath, you must do this, you must do that. We give them a whole list of doing things and then you must come on this date or after this time. Allah knows who will be living after those so many days. Whose guarantee is it that after that week or after those few days, that person will be living or you will be living? When a person wants to be Muslim, we should not make it difficult for that person. Already there's so much of difficulty he went through to take those steps and come. Now we're putting him through much more. Let him embrace Islam. Don't delay the process. The fact that one goes to bath and comes, this is an encouraged practice. It is not a condition or compulsory that one has to do this before articulating the kalima and reciting the shahada. Sometimes a person wants to be Muslim, but there are certain other practices that he needs to get rid of in his life. But explain to him that it doesn't mean it's only when you leave those evil practices you can embrace Islam. Tell him that there's no guarantee of life even the next day or the next minute. Embrace Islam and slowly work on yourself and aspire to become a better person and ask and beg of Allah and beseech Allah to help you leave those wrongs. Not justifying those wrongs, but do not delay your Islam because of those wrongs. But embrace Islam through that you'll acquire Allah's special assistance. And in that if you pass away, you have deen and you have Islam that you're passing away with and inshallah iman. So Hazrat Thumama radiallahu anhu returns to the Masjid the Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wa and his words to the beloved of Allah were so amazing. Oh my Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa there wasn't on the face of the earth anyone that I detested like you, but today you are the most beloved to me. There wasn't on the face of the earth a city that I hated like your city or a deen that I detested like your deen. But today, it's your city that's the most beloved city to me. And it's your deen that is most beloved to me. مَا كَانَ عَلَى وَجْهِ الْأَرْضِ وَاللَّهِ مَا كَانَ عَلَى وَجْهِ الْأَرْضِ وَجْهٌ أَبْغَضُ إِلَيَّ مِنْ وَجْهِكَ فَأَصْبَحَ وَجْهُكَ أَحَبُّ, أحب الْوُجُوهِ كُلِّهَا إِلَيْهِ وَمَا كَانَ عَلَى وَجْهِ الْأَرْضِ دِينٌ أَبْغَضُ إِلَيَّ مِنْ دِينِكَ فأصبح دينك أحب الأديان كلها إليه وما كان على وجه الأرض بلد أبغض إلي من بلدك فأصبح بلدك أحب البلاد كلها إليه. 
This is the beauty of deen. Through deen, we love the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa the most. We love his city the most. We love his deen the most. We love his practices the most. Allah give us true deen. When this is not the case, when the love of the beloved of Allah and his deen, his sunnah, his practices, his city is not loved by us, there's something going wrong when it comes to our deen is concerned. The environment is confusing us. Subhanallah, just today I met teacher Uzair from, from, uh, from, Burma, from, 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 from the UK, Brooklyn. He was, he was a teacher there teaching economics and so forth. And so amazing how he changed his life through this beautiful work of tabligh. And then he was explaining to my children as well, so beautifully, that you know I teach in the schools. But I don't even put my own children in the schools. He says we see what they are indoctrinating through the syllabus and how important it is that the environment of deen has to be so strong at home. He says they are children from such prominent homes. But when they went to certain schools, he says I know them today. They earning well. They have you know, uh, they, 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 they live very, very well, but they no longer Muslim anymore. Be careful for our deen and for our children's deen and for our offspring's deen, because this is the purpose for which we live. Hazrat Thumama radiallahu then said, O Nabi of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell me, I was on my way to Umrah. What should I do? My, now my life is in accordance to your teachings. The beloved of Allah وسلم, taught him the Umrah for our understanding. The beloved of Allah taught him, meaning did ta'aleem for him of the Umrah in Masjid and Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we learn the importance of sitting in the halaqa of ta'aleem and learning deen irrespective of our age. Imagine, remember, we think our children should learn deen. Yes, our children must learn deen. But we think we absorbed. We also have to learn Allah's deen and correct our Quran and increase in the love of the sunnah and love for our deen and the sunnah of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the ahadith of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Then the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam permitted him to go for the Umrah on the Sunnah of Janab Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Amazing is his journey of Umrah as he was reciting the Labbaik. Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. Labbaik la sharika laka Labbaik. Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika lak. Labbaik. Allahumma labbaik, labbaik, la sharika laka labbaik, inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk, la sharika lak. Subhanallah, how much of emphasis of Allah's love, emphasis of repentance, of changing, of improving one's life, of correcting one's life, in this one dua, and slogan of Labbaik. That's why Labbaik is the slogan of the lover of Allah. Labbaik is the slogan, is the shi'ar of the ashiq of Allah, the one searching for Allah's love. He's donned in ihram two pieces of cloth, similar to the kafan, because he's, remind, he's preparing for his death, <coughs> for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's imitating that lover, and a lover is prepared to do anything. He's disheveled. He's wearing two pieces of cloth. He's not just scratching anyhow. He's being cautious. He's in ihram. He's in a state of sanctuary of Allah's consciousness and all the time. And the sunnah is to recite the labbaik for men in an audible tone and for women in a low tone. But continuously we all should aspire to recite the labbaik continuously. Our ulama explain that it's part of the signs of qiyamah that in hajj, People won't recite the labbaik in abundance. They'll stop. Labbaik has dual in it. Dual. It means, oh Allah. And dual in Arabic comes for emphasis. al fi jahannam. al is dual. Meaning repeatedly cast, cast, throw. It actually has a lot of emphasis in it. So one statement of dual in Arabic has so much of emphasis. And imagine in one dua you count. 
The labbaik can be repeated four or five times because you can also finish it with the labbaik. So imagine four times of repetition of a slogan that if mentioned once already has so much of emphasis. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, oh my Allah. I am changing, I am turning, I am correcting my life, I am turning to you, I am repenting, I am connecting myself to you, I am turning away from makhluq to khaliq, turning away from dunya to akhirah, turning away from mal to a'mal, turning away from what you dislike to do those actions that you love and will bring me closer to you. Oh my Allah, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik, labbaik, la sharika laka labbaik, inna alhamda, inna alhamda, wa ni'mata laka wal mulk, la sharika laka. Oh my Allah, labbaik. Allahumma, Allah, to you alone, I turn, I repent, I change, I direct myself repeatedly. Allahumma labbaik. And this emphasis is, oh Allah, open your doors for me. Oh Allah, accept me. This is the slogan of the lover. Inna alhamda, Allah, all praise. Inna alhamda, wa ni'mata, all bounties are from you. All praises are due to you. All bounties are from you. Wal mulk. The controller, the king, the owner is you alone. In alhamda, wa ni'mata lak, wal mulk. The entire kingdom belongs to you. The entire authority is yours. Wal mulk, la sharika lak, and la sharika lak la bayk, or la sharika lak. Oh my Allah, you have no partner. Whatsoever, not even in the least bit. La sharika lak. Allah alone without partner.